Hello and welcome back to Renegade Gamers channel. I'm Renegade Gamer. We're playing Back to the Future. This is episode 5 and we are out of time. You know, you really should try to work things out with your dad. If you give him a chance, he might just surprise you. I'll keep that under advisement. But first, I need you to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Alright. Yeah. Damn, Doc. Jeez, Doc. Watch out! You almost ran me over! Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I'm... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Uh... Okay, there it is. So, how are the time circuits? Still broken. I've got a few ideas, but I'm occupied with other problems today. So is that what I'm destined to build for the Expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science. But if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. You can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure, Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? Oh, great. Uh... Come on! Here, little static thingy.
can't reach it. Yeah, none of that's gonna help. By the way, what's the 1986? Had Brown divorce hearing. Wife takes pot shot at a strange tubby, famed industrialist Emin Brown. I don't believe it. He's still fated to marry her. Right. <laughs> I can't reach it. I can't reach it. Gotcha. <laughs> The future is coming today There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way A day of invention is it's a mystic futuristic wonderland Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true There's a world of wondrous wonder on display Because the future is coming today Not bad, eh? Not bad at all, but <coughs> you fired her I found a loophole What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? There's a world huh? of wondrous oh. wonder on display. Yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. The future is coming to Okay. Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. But I was wondering. Come on, you can tell me. How did you manage to get Trixie your job back? I thought her being Canadian was a deal breaker. If something's really important to you, you find a way. You ought to know that. You haven't seen Emmett Brown, have you? Isn't he at his booth? It's the tall one over there. See you around. Did you marry her? I I mean I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. Just if you married her so she get her job back here at ah, whatever. Um I'm not even gonna say that that is that is completely stupid if you did that, but I mean, they have it. I don't know. Ouch, cakes! <laughs> Miracle food from the swamp lid! Oh, ouch, cakes. Nice. Get your algae cakes! How about an algae cake? Sure thing, mister. Wait a minute. You're the guy that makes the algae cakes? What? I thought you couldn't stand them. Hey! You're the guy that tried to pick up on my Eunice! Oh, for the love of... No algae cakes for you, buster! No! Let me have the algae cakes, man. Don't deny Invention me. That's special. How about an algae cake? An algae cake coming right ahead. Hey, wait a minute. It's you. Forget it, mister. Not giving me an algae cake. An algae enlightenment awaits you under the sea. The sea. Oh. Insert ticket to enter. You are going to need a ticket. No shit. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Duto, Jacques Duto, at your service. Duto, Jack Duzel. Could I get a ride in that bathosphere? Certainement, if you've got the ticket. Jacques Duto, famous diver. So you're some kind of celebrity? I do not like to brag, but uh, I have a small following here. Yeah. I guess people are always bugging you for autographs, huh? Asking you to tell them stories about your adventures and stuff. It gets a bit old, but I can always retreat to the depths. The fish are much less uh, uh, demanding. See you around.
Those look like the controls to raise and lower the whatchamacallit. The atmosphere? What's this thing? I think that's supposed to be a clock. Insert ticket to enter. I need some tickets. Let's go talk to Trixie. And here he comes, Never right mind. on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Callahan. Uh. What's going on here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty. Now. Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. The electrokinetic levitator was Emmett's idea. I just helped. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Harry Callahan really is. And where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Harry? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh, Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. For what? Come here. I'm a dunny, it's like... <laughs> Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town, ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. And, well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh, where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Bedlam at Brown divorce hearing. Wife takes potshot at a strange tubby, famed industrialist Emmett Brown. Huh. Emmett's gonna fly his electrokinetic levitator, and he's gonna do it today. I can't believe Danny let himself get bullied into shutting down Emmett's booth. I can. Oh, oh. Come on, Emmett, where are you? Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. Oh, well. Great! Right. <laughs> Four, two, five... Greetings, forward thinkers of Hill Valley. 
I dropped it down the fast just in case. Okay, you know, four, two, five. Alright, got it. <clears throat> Hi, Trixie. That's Techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now, what can I do you for? So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the Glass House, the Future Furnishings, and of course, Enlightenment Under the Sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. Thanks. You seen Emmett around? I'm kind of worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah. He wandered down that way a little while ago. He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Right. <coughs> Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't! Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. <laughs> what time is Emmett supposed to go on? Let's see, eight kilobeats past fifty. We're on metric time here at the Hill Valley Expo. Edna Strickland is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Artie told me how you managed to get your old job back. He did? But it was supposed to be a secret! There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, uh, from your point of view. Uh, he didn't tell you anything. Smart girl. Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. Ah. Is there anything you can do uh, to get Emmett's booth open again? Uh, I wish there was. But I'm just a muse. All we can do is inspire people. Okay, you're a muse. Can you inspire me an idea? I'll try. Well? Maybe it doesn't take effect right away. Thanks. Happy to help. Now, where were we? Are you ready for a picture radio? Wonder if that's anything like MTV. A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? Good question. A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tannen's speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Shh, he's approaching. The Electro Pacifier. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. The amazing inebriomatic. Well, from what the boys in the lab tell me, someday we'll be able to tell whether people have been drinking just by breathing into a machine like this. Just try it out. I don't think so. Alright. Now can you please leave me alone to do my job? In a minute, I'm not quite through yet. Wait, uh... Okay.
Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. Thank you, monsieur. I hope you will find your trip to the bottom of the sea less than likely. Monsieur has a way with words. <laughs> Welcome to the world of tomorrow, where a man's home is truly his castle. Here, gratification is just always a push of a button away. Privacy of the personal phone help. Hey! Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say hang up to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. New Valley Expo, where the future is coming today! This is Check Me News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? Hey, Trixie. It's me, Harry. Oh, hi. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I was just checking out this snazzy phone. Okay, bye. Bye. Conversation terminated. Well, I can see how that could be useful. Uh, so that was the green button, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> I expect them to actually put real fruit. Chinese checkers and everything. Fully equipped home entertainment center. So, where's the ColecoVision? This plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. Greetings again, mortals! Uh -oh. This is Techni Muse of Progress. Hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. I guess I need to get this going a little quicker. Oh, open. Okay. Uh, still a glass ice thing to pick this up. Speak of the devil. Danny, can I talk to Edna for a minute? Be my guest. I'd like a couple minutes of quiet. What's this about? 
What'd you do with Emmett, Edna? What are you talking about? You're the one who's trying to ruin his life. Believe it or not, I'm the one trying to save it. From what? From you, mostly. You really don't know where Emmett is? I haven't the foggiest. If he's smart, he's run far away from whatever dangerous shenanigans you talked him into perpetrating today. Shenanigans? Why are you still involved in Emmett's life? I thought you broke up with him. I did, but then your friend Mr. Sagan told me about your scheme to interfere with our romance. Not a very nice thing to do, Comrade Shmirnov. You don't really think Emmett's gonna want you back after you crushed his heart and tried to stop his demonstration at the expo, do you? Not at first, no. But eventually, he'll realize I've got his best interests at heart, and he'll come running back to me like one of those dogs he loves so much. But you hate dogs. Yes, ironic, isn't it? Why'd you go and get Emmett's invention sealed up like that? I had no choice. Once Mr. Sagan told me about your attempts to radicalize my poor Emmett, I knew I had to stop him from going through with your dangerous invention. But it's his invention, and it's not dangerous. Okay, maybe it's a little dangerous, but only to him. That's for the authorities to decide. Any chance you could talk Parker into letting Emmett go ahead with his demonstration? None whatsoever. And as long as I'm here, that contraption of yours is grounded. Right. Have you seen Mr. Sagan around here anywhere? No, and I wouldn't tell you if I had. He's more than a little scared of your anarchistic tendencies. Did you see? Trixie Trotter got her old job back. Oh, I know! I tried to have it out with Arthur McFly, but he refuses to explain himself. Apparently, he discovered some sort of loophole that allows that Canadian to retain her position. Well, the Ladies' Decency Society shall hear about this. Make no mistake. Why is Parker so willing to do your bidding? <laughs> well, the good detective knows that he owes his current rise through the ranks to my reporting on his behalf. Oh. He also knows that I could just as easily pen an expose about his previous nights of drunken debauchery and evidence tampering. You're blackmailing him? Reporters don't blackmail, Mr. Shmirnov. We look out for the public interest. I know your deep, dark secret. Secret? What secret? Ryan's a witch. You know, what you were whispering about with Carl Sagan yesterday. You overheard? Sure I did. And you did a really lousy job at, uh, burying the body. Oh, you didn't hear a thing. What I was talking about with Carl Sagan is between me and Carl Sagan. Okay, this is pointless. I've got to find Emmett. Stay away from him, you anarchist hooligan. All right. What's the glass thing? They talk about. Ah, here we go. in here well that was a waste of time hi you folks oh hello Schmirnoff Hey, Danny, could I have a word with you? Comrade Schmirnoff, come to turn yourself in? 
In private? With pleasure. You've got to let Emmett demonstrate his invention. His whole future depends on it. I'd love to, kid, but Miss Strickland thinks it's dangerous. Unless you've got something on her, her word is pretty much law. Great. Uh, um... Any idea where Emmett is? Well, he was working over by his booth. But by the time Edna got done haranguing me, he was gone. I hope he comes back soon so we can get this mess cleared up. Since when does anyone in Hill Valley listen to what Edna has to say? Ever since she helped take down Kid Tannen, she's had the mayor and the city council eating <coughs> out of her hand. I'd be an idiot to ignore her, especially with my, uh, alcohol-heavy background. Boy, I wish I could catch her jaywalking or something. I'd throw the book at her. Yeah, but you never catch a dame like that breaking the law, darn it. I don't have any dirt on her yet. Thanks. I'll be back. Oh, I hope so. You've got to get this albatross off my neck. Well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. Okay, call me a snoop. Hi, Trixie. Now, what can I do you for? Thanks. I want to talk to Artie just a second, then we'll get to the house. <laughs> Why is the... Hi. Uh... Okay. Hey, Artie. Edna Strickland got Officer Parker to close Emmett's booth down. What? Why? She claims his invention is dangerous. Is it? That's not the point. Have you seen Emmett? He isn't at his booth. Odd. Well, if he hasn't left the hall, I would have seen him. I'm sure he's around here somewhere. Is there any way you can delay Emmett's demo? He ran into some last-minute turbulence. Emmett's already pushed his luck by substituting this electrokinetic whatsis for the mental alignment meter he was supposed to be showing. I can't alter his place on the roster, too. The board would get the idea I was showing favoritism. Yeah, I could see how that'd be a problem. Um... Is there anything you could do to get Emmett's booth reopened? I am afraid not. This may be a wondrous land of tomorrow, but it's still within the jurisdiction of the Hill Valley Police Force. Maybe you should talk to Officer Parker. He says there's nothing he can do as long as Edna's got clout in Hill Valley. She does have that. Right. Uh, See you around. Okay. Make our phone call. Welcome to the world of tomorrow, where a man's home is truly his castle. Near gratification is just always a push of a button away. Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say... 
say hang up to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, tech me speaking. Who's this? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan, I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. How about that plan? I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. What details? All I'm supposed to do is use my pole with Detective Parker to get Emmett's demonstration cancelled while you keep Emmett distracted. You are keeping him distracted, aren't you? Oh yes, he's a very distractible young man. That's what I keep telling everyone. <laughs> There's been a change of plan. What? Yes, I've changed my mind. I think we should let Emmett go through with his demonstration. Yes, yes, yes. I said a lot of things, but I was a little crazy at the time. The important thing is, now I think you should let Emmett go ahead with his little demonstration. Oh, I get it. What? It's Comrade Schmirnoff, isn't it? He's gotten to you. No! I really want Emmett to go ahead with his demo. Don't worry, Comrade. <coughs> you can count on me. Ah. Why are you saying all those terrible things about Emmett's friend? Young comrade Schmirnoff, you were the one who told me about his vile deeds. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking. Wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh, that was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away, and I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women, flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking, rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Uh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Conversation terminated. Jeez, Edna was always a loon. <laughs> Confession's good enough for Parker. Roster, a man who saw the possibilities in Pond Scott. <laughs> Welcome, Ernest Philpot! Thanks, Taxi. Uh, I'm truly honored to be here today among all you all right. and attack people. Like the lady said, I labor in the field of Pond Scott. LG, ladies and gentlemen, is a mysterious and little known biological entity. No, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. Present my discoveries to a disbelieving world. Algae cakes, ladies and gentlemen. 
is the next wave in the agricultural Act casual. He's coming back. Hey, Danny, could I have a word with you? I thought you'd never ask. You know how you said you'd defy Edna if I could dig up some dirt on her? Yeah? You got some? Yeah, I do. Edna's the speakeasy arsonist. That's an interesting theory. It's the truth! I heard her confess. Well, I didn't hear it, so I'm afraid it's your word against hers. And no offense, but her word carries a little more weight around here than yours does. You haven't seen Carl Sagan around here, have you? Nah. Is he still a wanted man? Nah. All those arson charges got dropped weeks ago. Judge Brown said there wasn't enough evidence for a trial. Hmm. You know how you said you'd defy Edna if I could dig up some dirt on her? Yeah? You got some? Edna's the speakeasy arsonist. That's an interesting <coughs> theory. It's the truth. I heard her confess. Well, I didn't hear it, so I'm afraid it's your word against hers. And no offense, but her word carries a little more weight around here than yours does. Thanks. I'll be back. Well, did you put the screws to him? Did he confess? Oh, shit. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very interesting. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon. On it. Well, speak of the devil. Hey, Danny. Do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the expo from the likes of you. This will only take a minute. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Shh, listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker! Surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop all of that. <laughs> Does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? <coughs> Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's gotta be around here somewhere. Alright, we're gonna stop right here since we're at 43 minutes. Uh, I just wanna try to get that push through as best as we could. Or as, try to figure it out. Anyway, uh, when we come back, we will find Emmett and uh, hopefully go through with this expo and see where the story goes. Right. So, uh, I am the Renegade Gamer. Y'all take it easy, and I will catch you next time.